I cut the check, I cut the check, I cut the check Tell my niggas we up next, so we up next She shot a text, she shot a text, she shot a text Kill the p- I might put the Different bitch to rest Different thing, put a nigga on that same shit I've been ballin' with my niggas, Kevin King Bridge Oh, you drippy, but you better tuck your chain quick What's good, y'all? We back with another video, man. I have a lot to talk about. And it stems from the games that we seen yesterday. Well, just the game that we see yesterday. Um, I don't I don't really want to talk about the Hawks with the 76ers game. Good game by the Hawks. They came out and dominated. The 76ers turned the ball over too much. Um, ben Simmons was in on Trey Young all game. I still think the uh, 76 is going to win in six or seven. But I want to talk about the Clippers versus Mav game, and I want to specifically talk about the Mavs after I talk about it. So just to get get it quickly done with, um, Clippers came out one game six. Kawhi got in his bag. I had never seen Kawhi get so groovy. He was, bro. He was mixing. He was mixing Dorian Finney Smith. Like he was getting in his bag, and he just took over that game from the third quarter to the fourth quarter. He took over the whole game, and they came out and won. So. No team has won a home game so far in that series, and you go into Game Seven, and the Clippers won. They took over in that second half. Uh, Lucas Heroics kind of slowed down a little bit, even though he still ended up with forty something. It kind of slowed down a little bit, and the Mavs were able. I mean, uh, Clippers were able were able to do do that and take over. Um, Paul George had a really good game, not as far as scoring, but as far as playmaking. Paul George had a really good game. Um, Terrence Mann made up for that one game where he missed it, where he didn't go up for the layup because he definitely would have got fouled. He made up for that, came off the bench with 13 points, and then it was just a good team win for the whole team. So they go on to face the Jazz. That should be a really fun, good series. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I, I think I'm turning into a little bit of a Jazz believer. I'm not saying that they're gonna win this series. I would have the Clippers in like six or seven, but I'm not gonna like. If you was to ask me like a month ago, I've been like Clippers getting them out the way in like six, I mean five games. But like, nah, this Jazz team actually is pretty good. But like, they don't have it. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. They don't have it. But yeah, the Clippers came out and won that game. Shout out to them. They definitely deserved it though. They definitely deserved it. The way Ka- I mean uh, Kawhi is playing. And hopefully he can take them to where I want them to go. I want them to go to the finals. I need them versus the 76ers. Or even them versus the Bucks would even be fun. Like, I love KD, but uh, I don't know. I want to see, see a better basketball matchup. But, hey, a seven, I mean, uh, a Nets versus Clippers finals wouldn't be bad either. But to get into why I wanted to bring this video, I want to talk about the match, man. I want to talk about Luka and KP. Now, everybody is blaming Kristoff Porzingis for them not winning, saying, saying Luka needs help, saying that Kristoff's getting paid all this money to do nothing, stand in the corner. And I'm just looking at these people, I'm like, y'all, y'all are obviously not watching this, these games. When you looked at last season, the Mavs were one of the best um, offenses of all time because of, uh, I mean, according to analytics, they were one of the best offenses of all time. And... It was because, like, when you watched it, yes, Luka had a lot of heroics, but the ball was moving. Everybody was getting touches. Everybody was getting to touch each possession unless Luka would come down there and shoot the three, which is nothing wrong with that. But, like, everybody was getting touches each possession. It was screens off ball for Kristoff, screens off ball for Seth Curry, for Tim Hardaway. It was just everybody was moving. But then when you looked at them, this whole series, and even winding down to the playoffs, it was so Luka heavy. Like... They lost their um, um, assistant coach, uh, Steven Silas, and a lot of people gave him most of the credit for their offense. And then you can obviously see it. It's all Luka heavy. It's just everybody else. Stand on the, stand on the, around the three. Just spot up. That's it. One person in the dunker spot for, like, if Luka drives and you need somebody to kick it out to. But everybody else is standing stand in the dunker spot. And everybody's blaming KP. They're like, you're 7-3, and you're not getting in the paint. Well, he's not getting in the paint because that's not their offense. That's not what they want to run. They want to run Luka. Iso or Luka, draw a double team, kick it out to a three-point shooter. That's not... That's You know what that is? That's James Harden, 2016-2018. That's, that's the uh, Houston Rockets offense. And where did that get them? Nowhere. Nowhere. 
and that's what they're running, man. It's just heavy. It's heavy. Luca ISO. Luca go out there, drop forty, drop, drop forty point triple double. That's what we, that's what we want you to do. But everybody else to stand on the three. Let Luca work. That's not like that's not gonna work, bro. It's not. And it's crazy because they lost to a team that kind of does the same thing. Like it's just they're they're very ISO heavy too, but they're more talented, more veteran led team. So they knew what to do in the crunch time. But like this was this. If, if you don't if you don't agree with this, then I don't know what series you're watching. But this was just all Luca. Do you, do you? But Kristoff, go to the corner. Tim Hardaway. The reason why Tim Hardaway thrives in it because Tim Hardaway doesn't care. He's gonna shoot it anyway. He that's why he thrives in it. His confidence is just uh, he's just uh, uh, he's just gonna keep chucking like. If Tim Hardaway's on, you're good. But if Tim Hardaway's off, you're done because he's one for, from eleven from three because he's just gonna keep chucking. Them. So, he's the only person that probably thrived in it, but like everybody else, the Mavs have some hoopers, bro. Jalen Brunson is a hooper. KP is not getting paid $30 million for no reason. Let's not act like he's trash because he had a bad playoff. But the bad playoffs, I'm going to put it somewhat on him, but it's not all on him. The scheme that they was running was kind of weird, like... What happened from this year to last year? Last year, this man's offense was fun to watch. And yes, losing Seth Curry was kind of big. But still, the team was moving. Everybody was moving. Everybody was getting their touches. KP, like y'all hear me say this all the time. When they went to the bubble, this team was dominant. Luka was dominant. KP was averaging like 27 and 15. He was dominant. And this team was fun to watch. And I'm not saying they're not fun to watch. But yeah, even though I don't I don't agree with it or I don't like it, watching Luka go out there and kill it is fun to watch. But like... It sucks that I'm seeing KP getting bashed, and I'm not. I, I'm. I mean, I guess now I am, cause like everybody turning me into this big Kristoff Porzingis fan, because I'm like, yo, I'm defending him, cause like it's not solely on him. And then you just see the report now that just came out literally like 20 minutes before I um I press play. It says Porzingis is frustrated with role. He feels more like an afterthought than a co-star as Dante. Dominates the ball in the spotlight, which he should be able to feel like. Now, obviously, yes, Luca is the best player, so he is going to have most of the spotlight. But like, Luca does dominate the ball. He doesn't really get it off. Like, if Luca's not getting his shot off in the first 18 seconds, then he'll try to pass it to you, and then you got to force up a shot. But most of the time, he gets his shots off. And like, you look at the game yesterday. Look at the game yesterday. Let me search this stuff. Look at the game yesterday. Luca had 30 shots, 30 shot attempts. Right? But I just remember seeing it yesterday. He had 30 shot attempts, and then you look at KP. He has 12, and one 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 behind that is Boop Buck. I was gonna call him Boop Marijuanovich, like Flight does. Boop on Marijuanovich. He has 11. Then you look at everybody else. They have. Look at this. Tim Hardaway yesterday. One for nine from the three. He shot 14 shots. Most of them were three. Um, what's gonna call it? Um, Dorian Finney Smith. Four for seven from the three. Good game for him. But most of their shot attempts are threes. Kristoff. 0 for five from three. Bad shot from three. He had a decent game defensively, but bad shots from three. Most of his shots were threes, though. Because. And then Chris Hall really ate in that first quarter. Yeah, eight in his first quarter from just uh, that one play they ran. They just it was a screen, then dump it out to Bowman at the free throw line, then Chris Hall cuts, and it worked like three times in a row. But like, you have a second co-star, he's getting straight spot ups. That's not how you supposed to win this offense. Then you get Luca, thirty shots. But then you look on the other side. Look how balanced it is. Kawhi. 15 shots. Marcus Morris, 15 shots. Paul George, 15 shots. Like, it's just a balanced offense, and that's why they won. It flows better. You're not going to... Unless you're dropping 60, you, they was not... Unless Luka dropped 60, they was not winning that game, man. It, they was not. It's just, man, I don't know. The, this the offense. Losing Steven, losing Steven Silas was a big deal, man. It was a big deal because this offense doesn't look the same at all. Like, if you go... If I, if I can find it, I want to try to find... Highlights from last year's offense to this year's offense. You you will look three three possessions in a row yesterday. I put my hand up to God. 
It's just Luka go down there, dribble the ball out for a little bit, and try to go get your bucket. Everybody else in at three. It was doing that all series, all series. But it's so good because you cannot double off their shooters. They have shooters, but like, bro, it's so much more you can do with this offense. You have Hoopers. Tim Hardaway Jr. is not just a spot up shooter. The the white pop. Oh yeah, he is. Uh, uh, Jalen Brunson is not just a spot up shooter. Like they have Hoopers on the scene. So I, hey, I don't know. I don't know, but. I do know. I want to talk. I also want to talk about like what they should do in the off season. Um, at least they try with this Luka and KP thing. I don't think it's gonna work. I don't even know if they got good confidence like that. I mean, the uh, what is it called? I don't even know if they're like cool like that. Like they remind me a little bit, uh, like Shaq and Kobe. Like they don't like they barely talk on the court. From when, from the looks of it, they barely talk on the court. And then sometimes Luka be looking KP off. Like he does not throw that ball, but. Who I feel like they should target in the offseason. Otto Porter would be a really good pickup for this team, man. Just another wing who can shoot the ball, play defense. And he'll help out because he is a spot-up shooter. But he also has a little bit of other stuff to his game. He has decent playmaking, so that would be another good pick. Um, even going out there and getting Danny Green, a personal winner, a veteran player, will help out for this team a lot. Um, that would be a really good pickup for them. If they want to go for a big fish, I don't think they should go for DeRozan or anybody. But, like, my top three for them is uh, Evan Fournier, another person who can shoot, ball handle, take the ball to Lucas Hand sometimes. And, um, yeah, it will just help the flow of the team. And they do like their foreign players. So, he is one of the best foreign players in the league, I guess. So, go out to get him. He's not that much. You'll have to pay, like, 18, 20 million. He's definitely worth it though. Um, Victor on the Depot to give him a try. Just put perimeter defense around um Luca. But I really do think Victor on the Depot is staying in Miami. And my fourth my third one is um PJ Tucker. PJ Tucker would be a really good fit for this team. Right now, he'll be a really good fit because he can spot up and he can play elite defense next to Luca and it'll just help out so much. He can he'll be in that corner all the time and it just easy buckets for him because Luca's gonna draw that double team. Um uh Norman Powell wouldn't be too bad for the team. Wouldn't be too bad at all, but um, he's going to want a lot of money, so I don't know if they're willing to give him that. And then Lou Williams, just for consistent bench scoring, that will help out a lot. Trying to go get Jermichael Green if he doesn't want to stay, just for more toughness around Luka, and also a player who can also spot up. Uh, Doug McDermott, Kelly O'Lenny, more shooting, just more shooting. And I'll say, like, one more, A.B. Bradley. A.B. Bradley would be a really good fit next to Luka. But, yeah. And then if you keep Kristoff, I would try to go out there and get, like, a real, real center. So, I would try to go get, like, a Nerlens Noel, Daniel Tice. I would try to go get a JaVale McGee to help them help them have a big man that can actually be, actually guard real good center. So, I would do that. Uh, Bobby Portis would be actually a really fun that would be a really good pickup. He might be my top three for them. That's a really good pickup for them. So, they got a lot of options they can do. And then, options I think they're definitely going to entertain is just trading Chris up, man. I don't know. The fit just don't look good. So, hopefully, my one of my trades I think they should do, if Atlanta signs um, John Collins, try to see if you can flip them two for each other. John Collins for um, Chris Dahl for Zingas. I think that's a W for both teams. So, that's one. Um... Hey, if the Celtics want to try to go get him, that would be cool. Man, I just don't like, I don't like, it just looks like wasted talent, man. It just looks like Kristoff just spotting up. It is like, it's, it's disappointing, man, because like last year, this offense was flowing. This offense is fun as hell to watch, and it's just not the same. It's not. But, um, yeah, that's it for this video, man. I feel like they they got a bright future, though. They definitely have a bright future. It depends just on what they do, what on what they do. Losing Steven Silas, losing Steven Silas was a big deal. And you're seeing it, man. Office is just, it's just not the same. It's not. But other than that, man, that's it for this video. I'll be back again when I get another topic. 